So Nevada has come a long way since beating the absolute breaks off of the Riverside Royals in the first few seasons under Carson Strong, Romeo Dubs, but they've gone a long way in the wrong direction. They're one and four in the Mountain West. And let me give you guys a quick update on the Mountain West. We're gonna check the conference standings here. As you can see, of course, Riverside 4-0 overall, but still only 1-0 in the conference. This will be our second conference matchup, so it's going to be really important to get the win, and the Wolfpack have not played their best football this season. They are at 81 overall, though, so they compare fairly well to us as we both have the same rated offense. Our defense is slightly better. Update on the mountain as well. Utah State, New Mexico remain undefeated in conference play. San Diego State, of course, our big rival, undefeated in the West. So that's where things stand up to that point. We'll check in on the Heisman watch yet again. It's a lot of the same names. I showed this at the end of the episode quite a lot. But as you can see, thankfully, John Reese Plumley of Tulane is out of here after the Riverside Royals got the big win. We've had a couple of bye weeks since then. And this is week seven, our fifth game of the year. And yeah, Nevada not exactly favored in this game, I think it's fair to say. Let's go ahead and check out this matchup. Lee Corso finally picking with Riverside. He's been against us so many times this year, but we've won those games. Now he's picking with us. Is this going to be a shock upset for the Wolfpack? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Same rated offense. They have the advantage in rush offense, a few more yards per game, and then the advantage in rush defense, allowing about 10 fewer yards per game. Everything else seems to be a Riverside Royals advantage. Update on the season stats. We have Adam Daniel having a great season so far. I think there was a lot of hesitation about him. A lot of you wanted to see Justin Bennett be the starting quarterback. And I've talked about this a little bit before, but of course I record these in advance. So I'm seeing a lot of the comments now after the offseason. No, oh, missed opportunity. Why would you make Justin Bennett a receiver that makes no sense? He has low release. But when you look at Justin Bennett as a receiver, 84 speed is not particularly slow at receiver. It's not like it is in Madden, right? 84 speed is serviceable. We've seen what Corey Warren can do with 86 speed. He's not playing this year. And when you look at his attributes as a receiver what do you mean how can i not make it or how can i make him a receiver he's got 81 catching 82 spectacular catch 74 catching traffic and 87 route running i'm not super concerned about the release because i think he's just going to figure out a way to get open anyway with that 87 route running so i still think his best bet was to be a receiver and the biggest reason for that in my mind is in a battle between him and Adam Daniel for the starting quarterback job, I preferred Adam Daniel. I think they both have 84 speed. Yep, both 84 speed. So then it comes down to what can they do as a runner? And I favored Adam Daniel. He has higher juke, higher spin, higher trucking, higher break tackle. Liked all of those. And then as a passer, he's decent. Certainly very solid. 84 throw power, 81 throw accuracy. But the advantage with Adam Daniel that we have there is 87 throw power, which can get into elite ranges as he progresses as the quarterback. 79th throw accuracy, which is pretty favorable uh, to most quarterbacks that we're going to see in here. You can see like Larry McGuire is uh, far lower than that. But, you know, it's comparable to Justin Bennett. So if I wanted Adam Daniel to be the quarterback, are we really just going to have Justin Bennett ride the bench his entire time at Riverside or do I want to actually get him in the lineup and I decided we're going to let him play and he's going to be a receiver and hopefully a pretty good one so that's the update on that as you can see Riverside lunges to the number nine spot it was upset weekend I don't know if we can see that storyline but it was upset weekend so many teams inside the top 25 lost and that propelled us you know, all the way up inside the top 10 for the first time ever. As you can see here, last week we were 16. We didn't even play a game. And we moved all the way up to number nine as so many of these big teams took losses. Georgia Tech, LSU, Michigan, all top five teams before this week or before last week. You can see Maryland lost as well. Clemson lost as well. 
Like a lot of big time teams moving down and that gave us the opportunity to springboard all the way inside the top 10. You can even see that Alabama lost as well to Wisconsin and they dropped to number six. They're going to probably fight back up to, you know, the top three at some point. I would bet that they're going to have better wins uh, than Iowa, Oregon, probably Oklahoma as well. Notre Dame and Kentucky, two big undefeateds, of course, SEC team, 99 overall. And Notre Dame, of course, independent, 99 overall as well. So they are probably going to keep winning. We'll have to see what happens. And uh, yeah, quickly back to the season stats, just to give you guys an update. Uh, keep in mind, these are through five games, but I think Adam Daniel has played incredibly well. 333 yards per game passing. He also leads a team in rushing with 371 yards, four touchdowns. Reggie Gonzalez with six. Phil Triplett has been solid when we've needed him to be. And then receiving, Reggie Gonzalez has the most catches on the team. But the distribution's been fairly even. Michael Hamm and Corey Warren both with 19 catches. Humphreys with 17. And then even though Elgin Collins doesn't have a ton of catches or a ton of yards per game, he's making the most out of those catches with nearly 20 yards per reception. Michael Hamm, of course, a big play deep threat, about 25 yards to catch. Pretty incredible. And six touchdowns of the 10, or excuse me, the nine total touchdowns receiving for this team. Elton Collins has zero. A little mistake there. Greg All, 43 tackles is far and away the most of anyone on this team, including 42 solo. 10 tackles for loss is the most as well. And he also has three sacks. Greg Jackson leads the team with four. Phil Walker right in there with three as well. And here's the thing. We need more pressure from our D-line. I know we're starting a lot of freshmen. Terrence Brown has won. He doesn't really start, per se. Marcus Kerr had a sack in week one. I thought he was going to be a monster. Hasn't done much. Adrian Chandler hasn't done much either. Here's the thing, though, as well. We are playing, and we have been playing, incredibly talented teams. So these are not teams that we're necessarily going to dominate when we play ranked Indiana and ranked Tulane. You know, and, and it goes on, right? We're playing some pretty good teams. This changes a bit. Nevada's a team that we might be able to uh, pummel a little bit. So we'll see what the Royals are capable of against the Wolfpack. Looking for revenge. Nevada, of course, had our number the first couple seasons, but that changes. Here we go. Nevada versus Riverside. We have the number two ranked pass offense in the nation. Nevada is pretty far outside. You know, the, anywhere near being ranked high. I guess number 28 pass offense isn't the worst thing. Hopefully our DBs are up for the challenge today. Nevada going with the blackout unis. And this should be a fun game. Only our second game in the Mountain West this year. And Nevada's been a really good team traditionally against us. Historically against us. Hopefully that changes today in a big way. Riverside going to get the football to start off here. And I'm excited for a big opportunity for Riverside. I mean, this really is. I think it's easy to just, based on our performance over the course of this year, kind of discount what Nevada is capable of. But we've seen them. They've been a really, really good team against us. So we're looking to make a statement today and saying, hey, freshman five-star quarterback, Adam Daniel. You know, Reggie Gonzalez continuing to develop. This is a very different team than the community college that the Wolfpack saw for the first few years. This should be a very different game. So we're going to take off with Adam Daniel to start. Lower the shoulder. Daniel breaking tackles. That's a 16-yard run to start things off. And we are under pressure, and Adam Daniel goes down. Looking for different guys to throw to, but Paris Harris. His name's Paris Harris. Got home. And we're going to be backed up second and long i don't know man the nevada defense has played pretty good coverage so far trying to look for different options to go uh with the football but haven't really found a ton i've been super excited about as reggie gonzalez will pick up 14 make this way more manageable on third down also you see that uh <laughs> see that deep ref i thought that was the free safety at first it is not, though. We're going to quickly throw to our big target. John Humphreys will take a shot, but pick up another nice gain for this Riverside offense. Fresh set of downs. That's not good, though. Phil Triplett into the game. 
after Reggie's first run. I know he had a pass caught earlier, but is his stamina really going to be that low? If we're going to dump it off to Michael Ham, showcase that speed, Michael. Kind of got bumped up a little bit, but it is another first down, though. Hoping Reggie Gonzalez isn't too injured, but Phil Triplett, of course, going to step up in his place. Daniel will keep it. Lower the shoulder. Another broken tackle, but the Wolf Pack, like a pack of wolves, swarm the quarterback and make sure he's short of the first down. We're just doing a little bit of worrying about nothing. Reggie Gonzalez is back, and he finds the hole. And he finds a nine-yard gain just short of the goal line. Yeah, he's healthy. He's ready to go. It's just we've seen him get injured so much over the course of this series that it wouldn't be a surprise to see him get injured early and then be out of the rest of the game. He'll get the handoff here and find the end zone. Touchdown, Royals. Pretty good drive. Of course, we did have the sack. I backed up a little bit, but definitely finished strong. Running game got going there in the uh, Colorado, not Colorado, in the Nevada side of the field. Controller's not working. Uh, I hate this. I don't know why it's been doing that lately. No clue. Because sometimes it doesn't even register as disconnected, but none of the inputs work. And then when I actually unplug it, it becomes disconnected. And then it actually pauses the game. But where it's still plugged in, but unresponsive, don't like that at all. It's going to be a run. Quarterback keeper, Hall in pursuit. The tackle is made on the outside. I believe that was Alan Hart. I'm excited to see more of Bobby Anderson, though. He's a corner who's gotten on the field a little bit so far this year. Not a ton. He is 95 speed, can absolutely fly. Hoping to see him continue to develop. We'll get a lot of playing time next year, I imagine, as that's going to be thrown near Greg Hall, but that is going to hit the dirt. Also, given the personnel, I want to run a lot more 5-2. That way we can see guys like Terrence Brown, Phil Walker, and Willie Hollins at the field or on the field at the same time. Really getting pressure after the quarterback as Clemens gets the nice pass breakup. Good closing speed to get to the receiver on the sideline. And looks like we're going to force a Nevada punt. Would love the defense to play amazingly today. They got off to a good start. But we want to see that continue, obviously, as Daniel powers for 11. Work and play action. We got Humphreys wide open. But that corner underneath got back to it got the pass breakup didn't see him until it was too late all i saw was john humphreys wide open he was on the comeback and that one falls incomplete luckily not an interception here's second down getting outside daniel sets the feet throws finds michael ham and ham is falling forward getting 30 yards he's just too tough from the slot great release so maybe with justin bennett maybe he wouldn't be able to do that but great release off the line, and then it's just speed gets the job done after that. We're going to try a speed option. Speaking of speed, first and 10, safety coming up. And we're just going to hold on to that. Looked like they were all over Reggie Gonzalez at first. Not going to pitch it and risk a fumble. We'll just take the loss of three on first down. More play action. And we're just barely able to get that throw off. A couple of really tight windows and didn't really like many of them. Now, I will say this season, we've been really good on third and long, which you wouldn't ordinarily expect. It's kind of an odd down and distance to be particularly elite. But that's going to be intercepted. It was a corner route. Had to just trust that it was going to get open, and it really didn't. Adam Daniel, big hit, saves a touchdown. But obviously, not what you want. Not really a great route. Didn't really get a ton of separation. But of course, you know, it's just a tough situation. And, uh... We don't come away with any points. Quarterback keeper. Wow, this is going to be big yardage. We're going to have to play the quarterback contained here. I mean, Greg Hall comes by to save a touchdown, but they had three blockers compared to one safety. That could have been even worse. But oh my goodness. Yeah, we got to play the quarterback. But now we know. Now we know. Option defense, focus on the quarterback. And I think their entire offensive game plan is going to go in the trash now. Because we're just going to take away their first read. There it is. Quick screen. Alan Hart. We got to get a hand up or something. Good tackle by Bruce Clemens, though. Notably, that was also the first completion of the game for the Wolfpack. They're set up to run the ball again. Quarterback keeper? Okay. <laughs> nice tackle for loss, Malik James. Quarterback absolutely stunned 
seeing ghosts out there like Sam Darnold. Uh, third and goal. That was bizarre. Tight end in motion. We have multiple tight ends on the field. And this will be a throw, and that's wide open. That's the same route we tried to get going on the interception. And Nevada runs it, and it works to perfection. So it's 7 7. A little bit annoyed that this is the situation we're in. Obviously, would like to be, you know, 14 0 minimum. As Reggie Gonzalez will power forward for another first down. He's having a pretty good game so far. Four rushes for 30 yards and a touchdown. And his yards per carry would be even better if not for being used in a short yardage situation. So he's been uh, pretty unstoppable so far today. Big block by the left tackle. We got blocks all over the place. Adam Daniel, big gain. Oh my goodness. We had the offensive lineman out there blocking forward. That's a huge pancake. And Adam Daniel eating that as a result. Screen. We got blockers out in front again. Reggie Gonzalez. Easy touchdown on the screen. No one even came close. 42-yard touchdown as Adam Daniel gets his first touchdown pass of the game. Probably not the most difficult one. But it's nice to come back after the interception with a touchdown. But that's just the case. And maybe one of the only times I can say this over the course of the series, we just look bigger, faster, stronger than our opponent. Going to throw. And Bright breaks a sack and definitely... Uh, would have been a really nice play for the Royals offense, but they complete the pass, or for the Royals defense, I should say, excuse me. Craig Jackson there for the tackle. I thought that was going to be a sack for sure, but nope. Bright kind of ducks underneath it. I couldn't even see who got the pressure, but you got to finish that play. Can't get to the quarterback and not bring him down. That's a first down for Nevada. Bright trying to get on the move. Craig Jackson, who I think has recorded the last three tackles for the Royals defense, gets the TFL in the sack there. Second and 12. Nice play. We need to get more pressure, though. I think we're going to rock more 5-2. Of course, it's not in 5-2 right now, but we're going to do more of that as Brown's going to go ahead and uh, take the tight end there. So run up the middle. Clemens meets him, but can't wrap up. Thankfully, Joseph Brown did Third and inches. This is a classic 5-2 situation. But that is the end of the first quarter. Play action. Bright on the move. He breaks a sack. Hall meets him. I think it was Marcus Kerr who couldn't bring him down. We just got to be able to actually bring down the quarterback when we get hands on him. The Hall monitor making sure he has nowhere to go after that. But we got to bring the QB down. Still got the punt though. They have no safety help deep. I almost just want to see if Michael Ham can run and just get deep over the top. I think there's definitely potential of that happening, but Humphreys won off the line. Free release, and John Humphreys is in a foot race to the end zone. Down the sideline, caught at the 10. Big gain for our best player on the team. John Humphreys, the Stanford transfer. Daniel just lobbed it up, gave him a chance. Then Humphreys, of course, big time separation over the top. That was going to be pretty much as easy as it gets. And even if Michael Ham got deep over the top, wasn't really looking there. As that's an interception, McTaggart. So uh, what happened there is Michael Ham had a step. And then as we threw the ball, he got bumped by the receiver coming across. Lost the separation and the football was thrown right to the Wolfpack defender, McTaggart. It's just so frustrating when that happens, because I'm throwing the ball and then they get bumped. The throw isn't where it's supposed to be because the receiver's not where he's supposed to be. Big gain ultimately comes to nothing. Although Greg Hall gets a sack, his second of the game. Yeah, we're gonna be stat padding a little bit on defense here. Greg Hall is ensuring that he's wrapping guys up. We need the D-line to start doing the same. But man, second interception of the game for Adam Daniel. This one feels far worse than the first. What are you doing, Brucey? Just let him run right up the middle. Nothing to it more than that. Just let him run right up the middle. That's wide open. That's going to be a touchdown, maybe. We need Bruce Clemens to save it here. 
and he couldn't wrap up initially. Joseph Brown is there to save the TD. But Nevada is fighting. I know they have home field advantage, but was really hoping to be beating them by a lot more than this. And they are on the verge of tying things up. Brown run over. Avery Morrow with the touchdown run, and it will be 14 apiece. 14-14, a couple of uncharacteristic Adam Daniel interceptions as well. As Blake Hayford gonna take the run. The sophomore tight end playing some running back? That wasn't too bad. Reggie Gonzalez back out there though. We need a block, we need a block. We're just not fast enough on the O-line. First and 10. I don't like Humphreys there. We're gonna take off with Daniel. He's got pretty good wheels. We're just gonna slide this time. Another first down. Like Michael Ham over the top. That ball is underthrown and nearly intercepted again. Michael Ham won over the top and Daniel just missed him short. What's happening today, Adam? Quick throw. Not how that play was designed, but that works perfectly. It was a screen on the right side. We streaked Warren from slot left and got 15 yards. Second and four, gonna try another run. Another read option, got pretty good blocks. Daniel getting tired, but throws a mean stiff arm. That corner just shoved into the earth. Adam Daniel getting aggressive. And I'd be mad too after some of these interceptions. But he's just gotta play better. He's gotta play better. Gonzalez up the middle, bowls over the safety, 10 yard touchdown. Reggie Gonzalez is powerful when he wants to be. Train coming through, get off the tracks. Reggie ran right over him. That's how you take the lead right back. 21-14, Riverside. Gotta play better though. We played better against Tulane. We played better against Indiana. Played better against Maryland. And maybe it was a problem to just come in and expect a cakewalk. I guess we do have to remember our community college roots here as we continue to just get run all over. Huge gain for Avery Morrow again. We are lacking right now. Got to pick things up. It's going to have to be a big halftime speech by Gene Dangus in the locker room to get these boys going again. But man, our defense has been subpar. They're just getting a ton of separation and they're blocking our asses down the field. There's not much else to say about it. They just get a ton of space. Blockers out in space, the back out in space. And we just can't even come close to making a tackle. It's it's demoralizing right now. Bright gonna take off. He's gonna break a sack. Marcus Kerr again cannot bring him down. It's true freshman. I'm gonna be a little more lenient with him. But man, make a tackle. How about that? Bright probably gonna look to run. Throws crossbody, receiver wide open. And how? How is Jamal Bell that open near the end zone? How did the quarterback even get it to him? Not really a bright throw, but uh, it was perfect. It doesn't really matter if the decision was good. Big hit by Joseph Brown. That's what we need. More guys to come down and make plays. Who wants to be a hero? Somebody, hopefully. Going 5-2. Get my D-line out there. Hopefully make it a little bit tougher to run the football relentlessly. Paul in the gap. He can't wrap up. Joseph Brown can. Morrow falls forward for one. But that's what we need. Safety coming down. Keep making all these tackles near the line of scrimmage. That's what we need our strong safety to do. Third and goal. Probably not a run situation. Only three down linemen. And we're playing the slant. Joseph Brown just sagging it off too much separation you have to come down and play the slant recognize the play read and react touchdown nevada we didn't do any of the things we needed to do our defense is just getting manhandled right now got to be different in the second half as kentucky down to georgia georgia unranked kentucky of course number two in the nation but you know georgia's going to be very very good and they are trying to upset kentucky in kentucky I mean, you have to think Michael Ham's going to win over the top eventually. Don't like the options, though. <laughs> Barely get the throw off. Corey Warren's got to be wide open here, right? Didn't really like it. 
Can barely get it off to Ham, but he gains four and gets out of bounds. And we will be forced to punt. Oh, man. Have not played well enough against Nevada here. Not even close. It's a decent enough punt, though. No return. Throw to the flat. Hall, good tackle in space. The goal of this drive for us on defense, just keep them in front of you. Do not allow a touchdown. If they happen to get a field goal, whatever. But we cannot allow a touchdown here, especially with them getting the football at half. Need to limit points. And it seems like they're content just taking it to the third quarter as well. So unless something crazy happens, I will see you for the start of half number two. It is halftime, Riverside, Nevada, 21 apiece. Our defense has not been good enough this year. And, you know, I expected against Nevada, 1-4 and four overall, 0-2 in the conference, just kind of bend over and say, hey, our season's over, do what you want to us. It's not quite as easy as it seems. Or as it seemed. Thrown a couple of interceptions with Adam Daniel. It has been uncharacteristic. We haven't really seen too many from him in his true freshman season. That being said, he is a true freshman. You can expect some mistakes at times. And it, you know what? Better to come against Nevada than some of these top teams who we were staying in the game with and ended up beating. We're undefeated on the season. I'll tell you right now, our first loss of the season will not come at the hands of one in four unranked Nevada. It won't happen. Bright getting sacked. Brought out the 5-2, and Phil Walker gets home. Oh, he shed immediately. That's an unfair matchup, by the way. Phil Walker right over the head of the center. Basically in that nose tackle position, but he's way too good of a pass rusher. That's a bad spot for the center to be in. Third and eight. Defense got to play better. And that's going to be well short of the line to gain. And I would assume Nevada's going to punt the ball back to us. Always have to be aware of a fake, but... With this field positioning, probably not a good time for them to do so. And they will just punt the ball. Tyson Phillips back to return. Got great speed out there and good elusiveness. And he has a chance to return this pretty far. Makes a man miss. Tyson Phillips into Nevada territory. Great return. Need points. Offensive not been nearly as effective as I've needed them to be today. We got to go to more Reggie Gonzalez. He's been a killer. And we really just haven't given him the ball enough. You know, sometimes it's tempting to go complete air raid the way our offense is kind of designed with all these great receivers and as good as Adam Daniels been throwing the football this season. But, you know, if, if our run game is going to be great, let's get, Re let's get Reggie Gonzalez going, man. Let's let Adam Daniel eat on the ground. Let's get Phil Triplett in there. Like, we have the running game to beat teams that way. So... Let's not overthink it. Phil Triplett, nice run. Yeah, we trust Reggie Gonzalez here. Third and three. Need blocks. He's going to be just short. Didn't really get the blocking. It was basically Reggie Gonzalez against the D-line. And we could take the lead with a field goal. Or we could trust our team. And that's what we're going to do. All right, Phil Triplett in the Willie Briggs role. It's one yard. Ooh, it's actually going to be Keyshawn Thorne. Maybe his first carry of the season, and it goes for a touchdown. Keyshawn Thorne into the end zone. Should be 28-21 Riverside. Work to perfection. Love that play. And I thought it was going to be Phil Triplett, but Gonzalez needed a breather. Phil Triplett came into his role, and then Keyshawn Thorne into that Phil Triplett, formerly Willie Briggs role, and scored a touchdown on the fullback dive. 28-21. Defense needs to improve. Had a good last time out on the field. Got the punt. Need a lot more of those. Bright under pressure. And finally, Marcus Kerr makes him pay. He's gotten to the quarterback maybe three times so far. That's his first sack. That right tackle's getting eaten alive. And finally, Bright didn't see him coming. Couldn't evade the sack. Marcus Kerr, the true freshman, gets his second sack on the season. It's a lot of S's. But we're doing all right. Need Marcus Kerr to find the quarterback a whole heck of a lot more often. Second and 17. It's a run. It is a run. Morrow is explosive. More than you'd expect. Third and 11. Is it a mistake to trust man coverage? I don't think so. I like our matchups. 
And, but I don't like Greg Hall against uh, Tory Horton there. That's the one we didn't really account for. And it's a first down Nevada. Hall's pretty fast, pretty athletic for a linebacker. But the big thing there is for a linebacker, needed to get 5-2 personnel off the field and run some other unit out there. Bit of a mistake on my part. But of course, hindsight is 20-20. Hall can't get to him. Brown saves a big run. This could be a huge mistake. If this is a pass, we're going to be in a rough spot. We're going to be in a real rough spot. Thankfully, it wasn't. Now, I know what you're thinking. Bengal, it's third down. You're out here running man coverage again with 5-2. Yes, it's third and five now as opposed to a third and eight or whatever. So I think we're going to have our, their number. And that was... I, oh, he's still going to try and get up? Terrence Brown got there first and ended up bringing him down, I think, a second time. One-on-one -on -one against the left guard. Used that strength. Got to the quarterback. But here's the thing. He wasn't all the way down. Tried to get up again. But Terrence Brown was right there. Goes, no. <laughs> Use that big left arm to just push him into the canvas. If this was a UFC. And <laughs> push him into the, uh, the grass here. And make it fourth and ten. Read option. Daniel with the keeper. You got blocks down the field. Oh, nearly to the outside. Big time potential there. Daniel nearly up to 100 yards on the game. Yeah, we just got to keep the ball on the ground. Take time off the clock. Beat the Wolfpack defense that way. Third and three. We're actually going to go back to counter here. I trust Phil Triplett to get the outside. Third and three. Triplett. Uh, is that not a face mask? There's the flag. He would have been short. But Nevada grabbed Phil Triplett down by his head, by his face mask, and that's going to be an automatic first down and 15 yards. Third and four. I don't know that I trust the run here because Phil Triplett was short last time. What does a read option look like? I kind of have three defenders on that read side. We're going to let this go to the fourth quarter. It's the end of the third, up by a touchdown. Need a first down here. Third and four. Hopefully this is man coverage. We're going to trust Humphreys. He got enough separation. And that is an easy first down for the big time receiver. His fourth catch of the game. Over 100 yards. Good stuff from John Humphreys today. The rest of the receivers have been fairly quiet. But it just hasn't been a great passing game for us. As I thought that block was going to be pushed up the field rather than over to the side. Maybe would have fallen forward for a few more, but... They had a lot of defenders on the inside. So pretty much, you know, no harm done. Trust the blocking. Third and one. Oh my goodness, you got to block him on the outside. I need, I need to show a second look at this because this is terrible. I wanted to go up the middle the entire time and look at the fallback. He's like, I'm going to go outside. Right here, you see this cut? Boom. And then he goes back inside and then blocks nobody. Terrible. But once again on fourth and one, I trust the team. We're going to give it to Phil Triplett. I, I cannot believe that non-block from the fullback. Actually, it's going to be Keyshawn Thorne again. Here he is. Ton of space up the middle, and it's an easy first. I'm not going to lie. It's been an ugly game so far for Riverside. But I, all I care about is coming away with the win. And Adam Daniel. That looked like an easy touchdown. This is going to be coming back due to a hold exactly what's going to happen. Good route. Michael Ham right up the middle. Good power, but is just short of the first down. Will be second in inches. So already it looks like the holding doesn't even matter. Thankfully. And on second in inches, you know who's getting the football. Reggie Gonzalez in the game. Easy touchdown. Good blocks. And Reggie probably not going to get too many more uh, as easy as that one. I mean, you know, I do say that every time, but we keep getting these big time holes up the middle. So we will take that. 35-21, starting to pull away a little bit here. And Reggie Gonzalez, of course, as Kentucky holds on to beat Georgia. But Reggie Gonzalez, I think, has three touchdowns. Pretty good game. To run, Hall in pursuit. Yeah, you're going nowhere. Craig Jackson there as well. Curious who's going to get credit for the tackle. It's a big TFL there. Second and 13 for the Wolfpack. 
are they running the ball in these spots? Like, is that really what's going to help them get back in this game? Throw away. You got a case for intentional grounding there, but of course not going to get called on the CPU. Third and 13. I don't know if I trust this conservative cover two sink look. Third and 13. Throw over the middle is completed. And on fourth and two, surely they're going to try and go for this. We need to be in man coverage there. Need to be. But I didn't know the uh, audible for it. So we were kind of caught out of position. Fourth and two. It's a run to the outside. Jackson in pursuit. Saves a big play, but it is a first down. Not really a huge sense of urgency for Nevada. They're down by two touchdowns with five minutes to go. You'd think they'd want to kind of step on the gas a little bit. But they're just content to go short live to see another down i guess but time is running out every time you're short of the line of game and that clock keeps moving you're putting yourself in a tougher and tougher and tougher position bright's gonna be on the move throws crossbody incomplete i don't know how he escaped the sack are they gonna punt they're gonna punt on fourth and eight is that like waving the white flag at this point just giving up this is like from midfield Surely this has got to be a fake. No, they are going to punt it back. Down by 14 from like the 40 with five minutes to go. A little bit less than that. Reggie Gonzalez today has four total touchdowns. Three rushing. And of course, uh, that big receiving touchdown on the screen. He's had a pretty good game. The yardage doesn't look like anything crazy. But he's a big reason why we're winning. Four of our five total touchdowns. I'll take that. Quick throw over the middle. Warren up the seam. Yeah, it'll make up for the holding. And that should be the dagger. 56-yard touchdown right up the middle. And yeah, this game has kind of gotten away from Nevada. They were in it for a while. But they fell apart in the second half. And you know what? That's kind of been the trend of this Riverside team is win the second half we've done that a lot and Pitt has upset number 11 Georgia Tech I mean it, it, we see upsets every single week it seems like now big ones too and number 11 probably gonna fall at least outside the top 15 if not outside the top 20 Bright just gonna throw a snowball complete I, can we play a little bit tighter coverage? Is that possible? We're in man coverage. Do I have to get my corners back so they don't get beat so bad off press? I'm gonna try the same play. Allen Hart gets a hand on it. Nearly an interception if we had any type of hands in the secondary. Over 500 total yards. Doesn't really feel like it, right? I feel like our offense kind of hasn't been unstoppable. We do have 40 points. And we just, we're giving them so much space. I think that's Bobby Anderson. Talked about him a little bit earlier. I'm excited about his potential, but clearly still a little bit raw in coverage if we're allowing that type of separation for these random receivers. And that I left wide open. That's on me. Greg Davis with the touchdown. Uh, I, I had eyes in the flat. Left the tight end wide open. Completely my fault. It's funny, it seemed like they were giving up but now with three minutes left in the game, they're going for the onside. Lee Mayfield is there. And we'll try to end this thing. Second and 13. Do we run the ball anyway after a three-yard loss? I think we do. And we got good blocks to the outside. Reggie Gonzalez with a nice cut. Gonzalez with speed. Stiff arming. He's down at the 10. Big gain. Way to come back after a loss of three. And all it was was a nice little cut. How many times has the CPU done this to me? Just... Plant the foot in the ground. Quickly go the other direction. It's a pretty nice move. Subtle, yet effective. Nevada using timeouts. The CPU wants us to run the ball here. I kind of disagree. It's third and goal. A touchdown would really end things. We're taking off with Daniel. Free path to the end zone. Touchdown, Adam Daniel. <laughs> 0 for 1 on passing. Uh, zero yards, obviously. But a rushing touchdown. You don't show that stat. Just show his passing on the drive. Ran the ball pretty much every play. 
as it is 49 28 under two minutes to play it would take a miracle nevada with two timeouts just don't think it's gonna happen for him going deep washington beat god tim it's a real love-hate relationship mostly hate to be honest he has no ball skills we can't allow those huge gains man just can't do it got to be a whole lot better bright's getting sacked is that phil walker again i think it sure was his second sack of the game under a minute and 30 to play now we're giving them all types of space it's gonna be wide open oh he turns up field washington got stiff armed and horton is just an inch shy of moving those chains but you know with the time i don't think it's gonna mean much right under pressure again is that phil walker again his third sack of the game tying a score record phil walker is a dominant force spike by nevada now to be fair we knew that nevada had a great passing offense ranked top 30 in the nation but they have really passed all over us today right under pressure again this time it's adrian chandler Marcus Kerr kind of got there first, but Adrian Chandler certainly finished the job. Kerr kind of ran around the pocket. Fourth and 23. Could be the last offensive play of the game. Bright going short. And that is a broken tackle by Morrow. And that is a touchdown, Avery Morrow. Okay, wow. We've allowed four passing touchdowns today. Nearly 300 yards passing how do we allow that to be a score i mean that's crazy also on the play bobby anderson concussed out for the game well it, it looked like he deserved at least that with his performance today less than ideal is that's going to be a flag nevada still with the timeout doubt it will matter much but gonzalez has space gonzalez has speed gonzalez down the sideline one man to beat and he didn't stand a chance fourth rushing touchdown of the game for reggie fifth total touchdown and it's certainly a nice way to cap off a great game he goes well over 100 yards five total touchdowns gotta be at least mountain west player of the week if not ncaa player of the week nevada crushed here at home 56 to 35 in all likelihood will be your final Bright has all day. Will eventually find Ross who take a huge shot. And the clock will stop momentarily. Let's see if they even get a snap off. Only going with two wide receivers. And they are going to snap the ball. Hand off tomorrow. And that will be the ball game. 56-35 is your final. Riverside improves to 5-0. 2-0 in the Mountain West. And yeah, it was a shaky start. No question. But Reggie Gonzalez turned it on in the fourth quarter when we needed him most. Five total touchdowns. No surprise he's your player of the game. He usually would be Adam Daniel, but he was kind of off today and Reggie Gonzalez just took over. That's the type of five-star performance we've been looking for from him. And yeah, a lot of them were short yardage plays, but definitely had some big breakaways as well. I think he was spectacular today and a big reason why we pulled away in the second half. Adam Daniel, I mean, it wasn't a bad game, really, but the two picks are kind of a, kind of an eyesore. Two touchdowns over 300 yards passing, but rushing, though, look at Reggie. Some big-time runs really helped this stat line. 19 for 155, four touchdowns. Touchdown for Adam Daniel was over 100 on the game. Touchdown for Keyshawn Thorne. He's our big short yardage back. The senior probably uh, going to be, I don't know, like, maybe four or five more carries on the year if that receiving kind of a weird stat line gonzalez five for 62 and a touchdown michael ham 459 john humphreys 28 per catch four for 112 touchdown for Corey warren who had 35 and a half per catch but smaller sample size of course two for 71 and then defensively greg hall of course leads the team in tackles four for loss three for phil walker with three sacks two sacks for greg hall one for brown Chandler, Kerr, and Jackson. 
pretty much everybody getting involved except for Willie Hollins, who might have to be catching some bench time for Terrence Brown in the near future. Just doesn't seem to have it. Not too many crazy things going on in the games around the country. Like, just, you know, who you'd expect to win one for the most part. The ranked teams all came out on top. Kansas put up 28. It's pretty good from them. And K-State blew out Baylor. Kansas State is historically really tough at home, though. So I guess it makes sense. We didn't really talk about recruiting at all this episode, so I guess I might as well do it now. Not really too much to update you on. Uh, hopefully, we should have some guys ready for visit after this game, after this week. And we do have some visits scheduled already. Coming up next week, week eight. Super excited for some of these guys to tour the facilities. And uh, would be pretty nice to secure some of these big time recruits. Not really sure how exactly I'm spreading these points around right now. Added a couple of different guys to the board, hoping to scout them next week. But right now, the focus is just getting some of these guys into visiting range and then trying to close the deal and secure some of these bigger prospects. But of course, the focus has been on the offensive line a lot, still in some recruiting battles, but that's okay. That's okay. Hopefully we'll win some of these guys in the off season. But Christian Mason's the big one right now. Got to pass Tulane and we got to get him to visit. We're the only team that's offered him a scholarship. We should be able to get him, but you never know with this game. Now, week eight's going to be BYU. And originally they were a ranked team when they were put on the schedule, it was supposed to be a really big opportunity for Riverside to really test us, see what we're made of at the midway point in the season. However, BYU is no longer ranked, so they're just a good team that's looking for a big win over a top team. And plenty of players are ready to, vi uh, ready to visit, so we're going to go ahead and schedule those. And we've been crushing it right now. Multiple school records, either tied or broken. And we have moved up to number seven in the nation. Alabama barely beats Texas A&M. Some really close games here. Kentucky, you're going to hold that spot. But Riverside, I mean, how long do you keep us out? How long can you? We have multiple ranked wins. We are still undefeated. Could this be a college football playoff year for the Riverside Royals? Could a group of five team make it into the college football playoff? Look at Cincinnati. I should answer that. All right, who is ready to visit? Six different players. Christian Mason is here. And we've taken the lead on Tulane. Mizzou has offered him a scholarship, though. So it's going to be really important to get him visiting as soon as possible. And as you can see, nobody is interested in having him visit. We're just going to send him to this BYU game. Anthony Miner. As I said, not a minor guy at all. He's 6'7", 330, plus 9 gem, major recruit for Anthony Minor. He seems like he's going to be a Riverside Royal pretty much no matter what. And he should also be a complimentary visit here. And we're going to send him to the BYU game as well. Andy Harris is a junior college player. It's just kind of a depth move, honestly. He's definitely good. Great speed. Probably a candidate to receive a red shirt. No points in him right now, but nobody's going after him. We'll send him to BYU as well. Joel Holmes is a prospect, a recruit I don't really care too much about. He's a bust fullback, minus eight. Like, it's not terrible, but he also is a fullback. So I don't really care too much about him. We'll send him to the BYU game. Walter Spicer, we've not offered a scholarship to, but we are in the lead over Iowa State. I don't really think we need to offer him a scholarship. Honestly, I think he can be like a preferred walk-on. He's not great. I'm not going to lie to you. We'll schedule him for the BYU game. Now, Corey Hale's an interesting one because he's a decent player. Nothing exceptional. The reason I'm not too happy about him is his speed and tackling. However, his pass rush moves are really good. High block shed. I think he might work better as an outside linebacker or a defensive end. Currently not putting any points into him. 
But if we were to change his position, I mean, we might be able to uh, get a pretty good player. I think Fresno State or UNLV will be our best bet. It just depends because I don't want him to commit to UCLA. But he might commit before. Like, so here's why I wouldn't schedule it later. If we schedule it after UCLA, he might go to UCLA, love his time there, and just say, hey, I'm going to be a Bruin. So I'd rather have him be before and have a shot to get him rather than 900 points, an extra 200 that might not ultimately matter. So we'll do that. Let's also scout some of these guys at the bottom of the board here. Low lock percentage players. Plus five gem for Tyler Adams. 88 block shed. We've had some problems stopping the run. Tyler Adams could certainly help with that. What about Vincent Conley? Scholarship offer from Ohio State kind of concerns me. He's only a plus one. I'm going to take him off the board. Josh Robinson, not too much going on there. So let's use the rest of these to uh, put into players. 200 for Tyler Adams feels good. I think it would be wise to kind of reallocate some of these. I'm not sure. I want to make sure we get who we're supposed to get. You know what it might be? Is taking points off Anthony Minor. He's a big time recruit, but we do have a pretty good bonus going and he's visiting. I don't think we need to put 500 more points on him per week. But that is going to do it for this episode, guys. Uh, currently, the top classes, we aren't even close. We're just sitting around 100. But that's all going to change soon if we can land some of the guys I think we can land. So Week 8 is going to be a massive game against BYU. And then, of course, big rival game, San Diego State, Wyoming, Fresno State, Hawaii, Boise State, UNLV to end the year. Currently on track to go to the conference championship. Got to keep it up. We're number seven in the nation. We are still obviously undefeated in conference play. I mean, geez. The Mountain West is looking rough right now outside of Riverside. Utah State and New Mexico kind of getting it done right now. So we're going to hope to keep things up. But that'll do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Over you, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna turn taking it back to the house. Defensive joke, I'm laughing so loud.